Hi everyone, David Mela here. Today I'm going to show you some exciting stuff to do with Alteryx with uh, data wrangling and data analysis. And a lot of times in the early stages of a data analysis project or task, what we'll do is look. we want to look at the data. And it could also be for a bigger, larger data science project. Initially we want to look at the data and see is it just a small task or is it a large task? What does the data tell us? So what I'm trying to show you here in this one is I'm going to show you multiple uh, ways to investigate the data. So we're going to look at the data and tear it apart a little bit. So in Alteryx, we have this area up here called data investigation, and there's these several really nice tools they have here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here. I brought in my, here's an input box. I brought in my uh, date, or uh, the uh, bike share data, and that's it right here. This is the, shows you all the column names, uh, count, uh, temperature, uh, registered, casual, which is, you know, are they new, they're casual, are they a uh, uh, subscriber, did they or rent a sh or, uh, share or rent a bicycle in the past, then they're registered, total count is the total sales for the day, for each day, and it's a time series. So uh, here you can see it's two, for years 2011 and 2012, this data. So what I'm going to do is I use this select statement right here, and I'm going to convert all of these uh, fields, as you can see here in pink, from where they're originally v-string, okay, to, you know, uh, date or integer 64 or double. Um, I might sometimes go and change to a uh, fixed decimal. In this case, I'm not really dealing with something where I need to have that, so this double is fine. And then what I want to do is I'll show you how neat these data investigation tools are. So the first one here is the field summary. I click right here, and that's this guy right here. And what I've done is I, it pulls it straight into here, and this will only work if you have these things in integer 64 or double or some similar format. If they're uh, strings, you'll see you won't be able to put, pull them in here. That's why I did that beforehand with that select statement. It works for all these now. So in here... I want to produce summary data for, and I've decided, basically every field. Okay, so they're all in here. And also, one other thing to point out, I just remembered I did here, is I created a formula that basically, because the temperature field is like .34 instead of 34 degrees, it's just the way the data came in, uh, or they provide it, so I just multiply it by 100 and it gives it the same thing. Uh, it just makes it look something that we would recognize as 34 degrees, not .34. So anyway, if I go here, that's what that new field is here, by the way. So I've selected all my fields. You can just select all here. And I decided, you know, I could have sample input data, and I wanted 300 rows of the input data as a sample. And so I can click over here. And what's really nice with the field summary, you have to have these browse things enabled to be able to see these. You won't see them. You'll just get this data back if it's got data for you. In some cases, it'll just tell you that you need to have a, uh, a browse tool to see. So that's why you'll see I have these browses here and throughout all these. Now we'll go through them one by one. So in this case, I have in this one, it's showing me uh, the layout of the data. And when I'm looking at this, this means nothing to me. But this one here shows prompts. It shows ups and downs. I know I've got 2011 and 2012 data. So what I'm seeing is a pattern there. This one I'm seeing a pattern that's probably going to be count or total sales over maybe temperature because that's what that looks like to me but we'll have to see and investigate that further so we've got a couple things there some things that this one's meaningless it's probably months per year and uh but you want to see these guys where you see a pattern of upward movement or some hills and that's you know these guys right here are what i want to look at so next i click on the next one and this gives me the actual field so I can sit there and say, I like that one. So that's temperature, A temp, same thing. This one is casual, I like that one. So these two are probably going to be good together. Uh, next one down was count, same thing. So these three, the sales or total sales or new sales, you know, are going to have correlations most likely with uh, uh, temperature. And we can go down through this and look at humidity, and maybe, maybe not with that one. But here's a clear one, registered, same thing, because that's the uh, subscribers, same thing. They're showing a kind of a trend that I can see out of that. And same thing with temperature and wind speed, maybe not as much. Um, and let's go down here, and that's about it. 
So, and then this just gives you some data on the fields, values, longest value. If you want to see, you know, the make the breakout of your field and what's in there, max value count and things like that. I don't really need that. What I'm really looking for in that one is identification of trending. So next, what I want to do is I can look at either heat map, scatter plot, association analysis, or distribution. So let's look at the heat map. This is usually really cool. So if I go in here, this shows you how I set it up. I set it up for the variable of count, which is our total sales, which is what I'm probably most likely going to be interested in here. And I could have picked something else, but I picked that, and I picked it against temperature because I know that from this previous one I did that those two are going to have a correlation there, a big correlation. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to click on this and look at that. That's our heat map. And what that's saying is count versus temperature. This is the breakout of the data. And this is where it grows and where it, most of it sits. It's kind of cool. And here's the hottest spot of all. There's a little bit of a hot spot here, a little bit here, and a lot right here. So as the temperature goes up, the sales, see that? Or the, the, the sale, I'm sorry. As the temperature goes up, yeah, the sales going this way, you'll see that they're down here if the temperature's down. But as the temperature goes up, they go up. And they go up and up in certain patterns. See that? And then there's a hot spot right here and some hot spots here. So that's kind of cool to look for uh, certain areas that you want to target. Maybe you want to target a cold area here and try and increase some marketing there, something like that. Uh, it helps identify that. So here's the scatter plot. This is the next one. And I've got temperature and count. And so over here, let me go back to make sure I showed you everything. I've got temperature and count, and I did not pick the wild field as a binary categorical. Uh, I did not change anything I could. Here's where you can put in jitter. You can use the same thing in R. It's the same. What that does, the idea of if you have two pop points and they're like right next to each other, right on top of each other, you can't see them as well. So what jitter does, it just moves them around a little bit so you can see all the points. Uh, style options and graphics options. I didn't really change anything there, so let's leave it at that. And what you see here is very interesting. So now this is count and temperature. And what you see again is the same thing, that we have a pattern that as the temperature increases, the count increases of sales. And you can see it in an upper lower bound, and you can see the mean, and then all of a sudden at a certain point it starts to fade off, to drop a little bit. So your main area is right here, that's your biggest pay area right here for this data. Next, I'm going to look at Let's look at association analysis. So let's look at this. So same thing, you pick a target field, you check this box off. Same thing, I want to know total sales count. Okay? And then I picked all, because I want to see it against all of them, with a Pearson product moment correlation. Pearson's the most leaded uh, type of Cornell cor correlation analysis out there that's used in data science and data analysis. So let's go here and take a look at our data. The first one gives me an actual breakdown of the measure and p-values for every single one that I selected of these fields. Then I can easily, easily even see them plotted against each other. So, for instance, when I'm looking at count and temperature, look at that. It goes from a regular 0.06 to 0.62, which is a very high correlation compared to what it was before. This is a very low correlation. So what that means, there's a big correlation between temperature and count like we thought. You could also look at registered and casual against, uh, not against count, because that wouldn't make sense. But let's put them against uh, uh, temperature. So we want to have temperatures right here, and we have registered and casual here, both 0.54 each. So it goes up even higher at the uh, upper, or for count, which is both those combined, which is really nice. Um, so I can also select this one, which shows the actual correlations in kind of a heat map format, and I can actually identify and roll over, So because it's kind of hard to see with all the names down here, but if I roll over it, I can see that's count, that's temperature, I can see ATEMP, I can see all those and see what the correlation value is. If I want to see the actual data points, I can click here and see them on the next graph. You know, see if they're good, see if they're bad, see where they are, where they break out. Uh, what kind of a line is it? There we go. There's one right there. That's a nice one to look at. Um, that is temperature against registered. So see, once you pick those registered or uh, casual or total count against temperature, you start seeing these nice graphs where you can draw a line like we saw earlier in the scatter plot. And that was this one 
where you can see this that's the exact same thing right there next let's go to the distribution so we go in here this is the distribution tool these are all tools that I pulled up from up here so the distribution tool is right there um, bring it in here we pick the field in this case I've got two of them I picked one for temp and one for count so one for the temperature and one for total sales and for temperature I picked all four normal log normal weeble and gamma and what you'll see here is this gives me a breakdown of distribution analysis of temperature by density which is kind of nice to look at so you can see actually where your highs and your lows are and where your middle median is and that's for all these you can see they're all right there the normal curve the log normal uh, they're all in there let's do the same thing for count and you can see the breakdown for count so with count we can see the distribution is right there in the middle. The other one was for temperature was a little bit more spread out. And that's why when you saw the heat map, when we, if we go back here and we look at this, we have a hot spot here and a hot spot here. So if we look back at this distribution data, let's go back here. Do you see how there's not just one raised area? There's two, one here and one here. And that's why you have that. But so by looking at this, I can see and further look at insights and draw, start drawing conclusions and possible uh, theories of what I want to look into. And so maybe I want to do uh, different types of analysis based on this. I might decide, you know, I need a deeper dive and I need to do something. And I might even do it in a different language. I might do it in R. Um, I might stick with Alteryx here. I may, uh, it, it depends on what I found. But this is a cool way and a quick way to go take any data, as I just showed you right here, here's the data set again, make a couple little modifications to it. Uh, all I did was make it so that these, instead of being V-strings, uh, are uh, integer 64, doubles, and a date. And I added this field right here because it just worked. Uh, I like to see temperature as 34 degrees or 84 degrees or whatever it is, and not dot 34 or dot 84. The difference is the data, that's the, just the way it was provided. Uh, and it's the same thing with any project you do in data analysis or data science. You deal with data that you're given that, here it is right here, temperature, dot 34, dot 36. But in actuality, that means 36 degrees, 34 degrees, 20 degrees, 19 degrees, and so on. So you just deal with the data the way you're given, make some little changes on it. And what's really cool here is you get to start seeing what uh, insights you can start drawing from this are conclusions and you can start seeing like I showed you early on we saw patterns with we could quickly identify early on between temperature and sales whether it be new sales uh, sales to subscribers or people that have rented a bike more than once or total sales and you can clearly see it again here in the uh, heat map between the two that there's some very big correlations and obviously there's some areas where you can see the complete drop off obviously when it's 10 degrees out people don't rent bikes very often and when it's over 80 degrees they probably don't do the same thing either it's too hot so you'll see your sweet spots and maybe an area to target in here to try and you know juice up traffic there uh, and market to them you can see down here through the scatter plot the same things we're talking about because we found them here earlier in the field summary. Now the scatter plot, we go in here, we can see the uh, trends. We can go in the association analysis and quickly see our correlations. We can further identify them. We can delve deeper into them if we want. We can see the p-values. We can see all that stuff. Then we can go to the distribution, and that just further backs up what we saw in the heat map and possibly in the field summaries. So I hope you found that helpful. This is a great part of data wrangling and the early parts of an uh, analysis task that we tear into the data and we look at it and we look for patterns, correlations, you know, things that can we can delve deeper into and maybe determine meaning from. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and have a great day.